Hello folks and welcome to today's Word at One and uh, we are continuing our uh, uh, readings in the book of Isaiah and uh, the accompanying devotional by Ray C. Stedman Ministries and today Joyce is going to be reading the passage from Isaiah 45 verses 9 through 25 and it is uh, entitled Turn uh, to me all ends of the earth and be saved. And this is a passage which speaks of our Creator God and that uh, salvation and righteousness are found in Him. They are spring up together and we are not to resist Him as He calls us. And uh, He's the one who maintains and guides and controls things. He's the sovereign Lord over all and all our gods by comparison are idols. And uh, that is what this passage reminds us of. It reminds us to look to the Lord. And in him, as we look to him, we will find righteousness, we will find strength, and we will find salvation. And it's not just to depend on ourselves or anyone else, it's to look to the Lord our God. And uh, over to Joyce now to read us the, the, both the passage and the devotional. Be blessed. Hello there. Um, I'm doing a, a reading from Isaiah, um, and it's Isaiah 45, verses 9 to 25, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Destruction is certain for those who argue with their Creator. Does a clay pot ever argue with its Maker? Does the clay dispute with the one who shapes it, saying, Stop, you're doing it wrong. Does the pot exclaim, how clumsy can you be? How terrible it would be if a newborn baby said to its father and mother, why was I born? Why did you make me this way? This is what the Lord, the creator of the Holy One of Israel says. Do you question what I do? Do you give me orders about the work of my hands? I am the one who made the earth and created people to live on it. With my hands, I stretched out the heavens. All the millions of stars are at my command. I will raise up Cyrus to fulfil my righteous purpose, and I will guide all his actions. He will restore my city and free my captive people, and not for a reward. I, the Lord Almighty, have spoken. And then... From verse 14, and it says, Future conversion of Gentiles. This is what the Lord says The Egyptians, Ethiopians, and Sabians will be subject to you. They will come to you with all their merchandise, and it will all be yours. They will follow you as prisoners in chains. They will fall to their knees in front of you and say, God is with you. And he alone is God. Truly, O God of Israel, our Saviour, you work in strange and mysterious ways. All who make idols will be humiliated and disgraced. But the Lord will save the people of Israel with eternal salvation. They will never again be humiliated and disgraced throughout everlasting ages. For the Lord is God. And he created the heavens and the earth, and he put everything in place. He made the world to be lived in, not to be a place of empty chaos. I am the Lord, he says, and there is no other. I publicly pro proclaim bold promises. I do not whisper obscurities in some dark corner so that no one can understand what I mean. And I did not tell the people of Israel to ask me for something. I did not plan to give. I, the Lord, speak only what is true and right. Gather together and come, you fugitives from surrounding nations. What fools they are who carry around their wooden idols and pray to gods that cannot save. Consult together, argue your case and state your proofs that idol worship pays. Who made these things known long ago? What idol ever told you they would happen? 
was it not I, the Lord? For there is no other God but me. A just God and a Saviour, no, not one. Let all the world look to me for salvation. For I am God, there is no other. I have sworn by my own name, I will never go back in my word. Every knee will bow to me and every tongue will confess allegiance to my name. The people will declare, The Lord is the source of all my righteousness and strength, and all who are angry with him will come to him and be ashamed. In the Lord, the generations of Israel will be justified, and in him they will boast. Amen. Now the wee devotion that goes with this, um, it's called Turn to me and be saved. And the verse, uh, the scripture verse that's highlighted here is, Woe to those who quarrel with their maker, those who are nothing but pot potsherds among the potsherds on the ground. Does the clay say to the potter, What are you making? Does your work say, The potter has no hands? It would be ridiculous if Clay were to say to the potter, <clears throat> I don't like the way you're doing this. This design doesn't appeal to me at all. Listen to the irony of this passage. Woe to him who says to a father, What are you begetting? Or to a woman, with what are you in travail? Isaiah 45 verse 10 This is the God in whom we have to deal. How incredibly arrogant of man to criticise the workings of a God like that. This passage is designed to humble man in his proud confidence and to show him how dependent he is upon the God whom he dares to criticise. C.S. Lewis once argued that con to contend with God is to contend with the very one who makes it possible for us to contend in the first place. And how foolish we are to attempt that. From this passage we learn that human folly takes many forms. Either self-sufficient, self-sufficiency, man imagining that he is God and that he can run the world, or idolatry, where man trusts something else as God other than the true God. Either one, according to this account, and as confirmed by history, results in slavery and tragedy. This is what is behind the rise of totalitarianism in our day. God's answer is found in verses 22 and 23. Turn to me and be saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. How hopeless it is for man to find his own way out of the morass which he has made for himself. The Spirit of God used this verse to speak to the heart of a 15-year-old boy in England in the last century. That boy, Charles Haddon Spurgeon, took shelter in a little Methodist church on a cold and snowy day in 1850. As there was no preacher, the deacon read the text, Look unto me, and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth. And seeing a lonely boy sitting in the back, the deacon, who could not speak very well, addressed Spurgeon, directly telling him to look to God, and he would be saved. Spurgeon later said that he then looked, and he was saved. He went on to become one of the greatest preachers of the English church. But this is the out which God offers to mankind. Look to me, he says. Do not look to science or to technology. These are fine in themselves. They give certain creature comforts, but they cannot deliver you. They cannot satisfy you or meet your need. If you pursue them, they will turn to ashes. God is the only deliverer from human hurt and failure. And there's a wee prayer here that says, 
Thank you, Father, for this precious promise. How beautifully it has been fulfilled in so many lives and through all the ages of time. May I recognise how foolish it is to trust in anything else but your presence in my life. And the life application for this is when we as Christians claim Jesus as Lord, do we then surrender willingly to the process of becoming Christ-like? Are we being transformed by the renewing of our mind? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you sent Jesus to die for us. Lord, there is a way out for us, and that is salvation in Jesus. Lord, I thank you that all these years ago, Lord, when you wrote the Bible and when Jesus came, that was your plan. That was your plan for us, Lord. None of us is a mistake. Father God, it was in your plan that we should be saved. So, Father, as, as we just bow our heads just now, Lord, I pray that each one of us would recognise that we're nothing without you. We can't do it, Lord, without you. And, Lord, that we would just lay our life before you and say, Jesus, take me as I am. I can come no other way. Take me deeper into you. Let my flesh life melt away. Amen.